from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Girls in Tech Catalyst Conference, brought to you by Girls in Tech. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at Girls in Tech Catalyst event, about 700 uh, people listening to two days of, of short presentations by senior leaders, mainly women senior leaders, and, and it's a really good event. We were here a couple years ago, Girls in Tech's a great organization, and so we're excited to have a board member uh, with us right now. She's Mayumi Hiramatsu. She's a Senior Vice President, Cloud Ops Engineering and Security for N4. Great to see you. Great to see you too. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So let's just jump in. So you've spoken in prior years. You're not speaking this year, but what, from a corporate perspective as well as a personal perspective, what does this event mean to you? From a corporate perspective, from girls and tech's perspective, it's just amazing. Every year it gets better. Um, I did speak the last two years and I'm humbled by the speakers this year, so I'm actually really enjoying it. <laughs> right. It's quite a caliber. It's kind of fun when you can just sit and relax and watch everybody else speak, right? Exactly, and, and quite a caliber that the team's put together. So as a board member, I can't be prouder than what the team's pulled together. Right. Um, and it's so much buzz. Everybody's inspired. I see people taking notes. Um, folks are really taking this to heart right. in terms of takeaways, practical tips, and getting energized. So right. I think it's great. From a personal perspective, a little bit about myself. So um, I'm from originally from Japan. I came here at 17. I didn't speak any English. I wasn't planning on getting an engineering. I have an economics degree. So you can imagine, I got into engineering and built my career here. It was not easy. <laughs> right. For a foreigner, um, a female, Asian, right. non-speaking English person. You clicked all the wrong boxes, right? Yeah, I don't know why I choose to do something harder than it needs to be. Um, and I don't even have an engineering degree, I have an economics degree. Right. Um, but I love technology. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I think it's a wonderful place for any woman like me right. to be able to give it a chance and actually have a wonderful career. Right. Right. I also love the fact that it sort of gives this, it evens out everybody's potential. So with an economics degree or from another country, I've been at Silicon Valley and have done great. So right. if I can do it, I know anybody else can right. do it. Um, so for me, giving back to the community and making sure that the next generation can successfully come through the right. technology ranks or have their own company is really exciting. So it's great to be on the board of Girls in Tech and I can channel my energy through that way. And I think Girls in Tech is, it is one of the largest, if not the largest world, um, uh, nonprofit organization to help women with very pro uh, practical and great tips, as right. well as you know not only these Catalyst conferences, but my goodness, we do hackathons, we do pitch nights, and give entrepreneurs a chance to actually shine. Right, right. Um, global classrooms where we can actually give a lot of uh, teaching opportunities and learning opportunities. So. Super excited to be here. Then what about from the M4 perspective? Did you spearhead the M4 participation? Did Girls in Tech, Adriana, come seek you out? How did you get directly involved and how did you sell it and why does it matter to M4? Yeah, so I've been a board member for a year and a half um, and not so coincidentally, you can see Cisco's also there. I used to be a Cisco. Once I introduced Cisco and N4 to Girls in Tech, Everybody was really excited. There's just so much win-win. Right. Um, so for N4, it's great on a couple of things. Uh, you may know that N4 is a pretty large company. Right. We're a third or fourth largest ERP. Um, and we have really important uh, business solution software. For example, uh, focus on verticals. For example, healthcare, uh, manufacturing, retail. And as a company, we're doing really well. But the other thing that really attracted me to N4 is our diversity programs. So we have two of them. One is WIN, Women in, uh, Women in Four Network. Okay. And it's about essentially a women network to help each other out and um, continue to grow our career, which is important. But the other program is EAP, which is Education Alliance Program. And I love the fact that we actually have a program, we have 80 plus universities that we tie in with to bring in diverse workforce um, and teach them in the universities and bring them into the workforce, whether it's in for or not, candidly. So it's STEM programs that gives diversity, whether it's uh, gender or background or international location, 
or even age, right? right because right. we're bringing in college grads. I just love the programs so, that Infor so has. So what is that? I mean, how does the relationship go between Infor and the universities? What's kind of the, the formal structure? Yeah, so there's a program called Education Alliance Program, right, the AP. Right, right. Very, very successful, as I mentioned, 80 plus universities that we work with already. Right. And what we do is we essentially give um, these students in the university training program that teaches our software. And there are actually a couple of great things that come out of it. Of course, it's promoting STEM right, and right. making sure that these kids have young adults have great technology uh, STEM education coming out of college. It's also great for N4 because we also have people graduating with our technology skill set. So right. not only directly impacts us as they join our company, but also even if they don't join our company, right. we've given them a chance to get into technology and it's very, very successful. Right. I'm very proud of it. So N4 is big on diversity and technology, as you can see. Right. And of course, we're proud to be here this year as one of the sponsors. Right, All right. so I'll give you the last word as a board member to the audience. How can they get involved with Girls in Tech? How should they get involved? What are some of the ways that you would suggest for them to get their toe in the water if they're not familiar with the organization? Yeah, uh, girlsintech.org is a great place to start. Uh, we have a wonderful website, of course, and we have uh, various types of programs involved. So depending on what it is, if you want to learn, you can actually join some of the hackathons or uh, you know, global classrooms to get some practical skills. If you're a founder and you actually want to pitch your idea and get some funding, you can actually go to the pitch night. There are different programs that we can leverage, and I highly encourage everybody to join. All right, well, Miami, thanks for taking a few minutes. Congrats on the sponsorship. and. And uh, all your good work on the board. Thank you very much. You're welcome. She's Mayumi. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're at Girls in Tech Catalyst 2018 in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.